Should you be playing a hybrid, a drive and iron, or a high lofted fairway wood? Well, you're about to find out based on a slower swing speed or a faster swing speed to see which type of club you should play in your bag. Golfers, welcome back to the channel. I'm Director of Instruction at Swing Lab Performance Golf. My name is Thomas Campbell. Today I'm joined by Ian McKenzie Olson, fellow teaching professional. Uh, when you're doing a club fitting, we're trying to gap out your fairy woods, your hybrids, your longest irons in your bag. And we're trying to find out what clubs you should be playing based on your stopping power on the green and what kind of trajectory we're looking for. Now, today's test, call it the 21 degree test. We have three clubs. All clubs are 21 degrees aloft. We have a four hybrid in the Callaway Paradigm. We have the Callaway X Forge Utility, three iron, was 21 degrees. And Ian is holding the Titleist TSR2 21 degree seven wood. Ian, what do you expect will happen here? You know, I think typically, you know, you can expect to maybe see some higher spin rates with um, maybe the seven wood and then going down to the hybrid somewhere in the middle and the driving iron, um, kind of the lowest uh, spin rates. You really only see really advanced golfers playing something like a driving iron, but you never know, maybe different swing speeds. You mentioned you're going to, you know, swing a little bit slower. I'm going to swing a little bit faster. So we'll find out. Yeah, and a lot of this will come down to center of gravity. If you look at these three different clubs, they're all different design. You look at the, the iron, for example, there's not much to, the, to this. The center of gravity is a little bit higher in the face. Then you get to the seven wood, for example, the center of gravity is already kind of pushed all the way back and it's a larger club head. And then the hybrid's kind of in between. So you're right, I would expect a little higher ball flight, ball flight with the seven wood mm -hmm. and a little bit lower with the driving iron. But this is interesting because all clubs are 21 degrees aloft on them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out if it's loft or if it's center of gravity that's going to influence the ball flight. All right. Let's do some testing. All right, Thomas, looks like you got the hybrid in your hand. Like we talked about, this is kind of should be like the, you know, club. It's kind of in the middle in the two, like spin rate, um, max height. Um, probably somewhere in the middle between driving iron and, and seven wood, right? Yeah, and let's find out. And these, these golf shafts here, they are slightly different. The driving iron is a steel golf shaft. Um, the hybrid and the, and the fairy wood, they're, they're, they're graphite golf shafts. So there's gonna be a little bit difference in test. We do know, yes, golf shaft can influence the, the launch a little bit, but really more the loft and the center of gravity, this is a test on, on those numbers. All right, so let's, let, let's find out. All right, so you hit a few shots there. Um, looks like averaging about 83, 84 miles an hour. Um, obviously, toning it down from your, your normal speed. What'd you think about like the numbers you saw? Yeah, this is just moderate speed with a four hybrid. Um, seeing the ball spin 3,700 and seeing that landing angle kind of push 40 degrees at that speed is a bonus. So that's why a hybrid over an iron is always a good play for golfers that don't swing my, quite as fast. Yeah. Um, so we're going to test that theory right now. I got this three iron here. I'm going to try and swing probably pretty moderate speed again and see what happens. All right. All right, Thomas, hit some good ones with the, with the driving iron there. Similar speed, 85 miles an hour. So you're within one mile an hour. What are the biggest differences you noticed in those shots compared to the hybrid? Yeah, I felt like they were really good strikes. Yeah. I feel like I was, I was flushing it, but you could definitely see where the ball was hitting the screen. Yeah. It was, it was quite low on the screen. And you can see here, height 43 feet in the air versus 74 feet in the air. Big so difference. Big difference there, right? Landing angle 13 degrees less with the, with the three iron versus the hybrid. So that's, that's the biggest difference that, I, that I'll notice. All right. All right, let's try out the, the seven wood next. All right. All right, Thomas, you hit all three. Um, talk us through some of the biggest differences and what you can expect from like a levels of golfers that swing at you know around this speed and what they should expect through each club. I think the biggest difference, honestly, was the weight of the club. When I was hitting this, this seven wood, and I was trying to swing this as slow as I could to try and match up the speed there, I just couldn't get it down. So my moderate spring speed was a little faster. Okay. So the shaft's longer and it's lighter. So you're gonna generate a little bit more, more speed. 
But then coming back to like the, the data, what we're seeing out of the ball flight is I got a little extra height out of the seven wood compared to the hybrid. We're talking 89 yeah. feet, landing angle 41 and a half degrees. That's gonna give you some stopping, stopping power when you're only swinging that seven wood at 87 miles an hour. All right. So that's the biggest thing I noticed. I mean, these are some huge differences. Really are. If you're looking at three iron versus four hybrid, that's probably where you see the biggest difference. And then you just have the extra benefit of a, of a seven wood where you're just getting that, the center gravity pushed back a little deeper and it's causing that ball to launch a little higher and fly just a little bit higher here yet. So we really saw, really, if you look at the height there, it's twice as high in the air with a three iron versus a seven wood. It's 21 degrees on that on both clubs, but the center of gravity is doing its job. Mm -hmm. I'm interested now to see at a you know, little faster swing speed when you're hitting, just to see what happens and see if it does double or if it's actually gonna be a little bit closer together because that three iron might actually fly a little bit higher. All right, so what I find really interesting here, Ian, is you hit some really good shots there with the four hybrid. That were, you know, we were talking 250 going 272. You know, obviously you were swinging faster. But if you look at the seven wood numbers for me, notice that I almost hit it just as high as you. Height 89 feet in the air. My landing angle actually was a touch, touch steeper. So that is showing us that center of gravity is obviously doing, it, doing its job yeah. for sure. So that's why the advantage of playing a high lofted fairy wood you get that advantage when you don't maybe swing quite as fast. And faster swing speed golfers, they'll play a club that maybe doesn't have as deeper center of gravity. Let's see uh, the drive and iron here now. All right, so very interesting here, Ian. We're not seeing as much separation. Right. As, I, as I mentioned, because you have some speed, you're able to still get this three iron up in the air. We're seeing it as a touch lower. We're talking six feet lower, but it's not the same separation that we're seeing with the more moderate club speed. So the gains are to be seen for sure for moderate swing speed players to play a higher, sorry, a lower center of gravity or, or high lofted fairy wood or, or hybrid. Yeah. What, what do you think about between the two clubs? Did you notice any differences at all? And did you notice any differences between the hybrid and the three iron? I would say, um, you know, they all, they kind of felt the same in terms of, you know, how they came off the club, launch and everything. The biggest difference was just the weight. I uh, felt like swinging this driving iron just weighed, it was a lot heavier, especially from going from the hybrid to the driving iron. But yeah, I mean, super interesting, super interesting numbers. I think, you know, our, my guess that I made kind of earlier on was like spot on with the numbers we saw from you at your speed. Um, but obviously it's not turning out that way for a uh, faster swing speed. So let's see the seven wood and uh, see what that does. All right, so this is where we're now seeing those gains a little bit. You can see height, it, it jumped up from you being around about 90 feet in the air to 106. And even one of the shots that you got maybe a little on the toe, the spin rate was a little bit lower, but you'll notice the spin rate on average was actually higher yet with the seven wood, even though it's got 21 degrees on loft on it, just like the other two clubs, a little bit more spin, a little bit more height. Definitely some gains to be made there. Yeah, definitely some interesting stuff. You know, um, you know, between the two speeds, like what kind of conclusions can be made? What should people really look for depending on their club speed? Yeah, I mean, there's this debate on the, the seven wood. Is a seven wood for slower swing speed golfers? Is it, you know, you see some guys on tour still playing the five wood or seven wood. I think like Dustin Johnson, for example, he's always played a little higher lofted club. Um, it's not... It's not old, and it's a little bit of an ego thing sometimes, I think, for people. If they all of a sudden they got a seven wood or even a nine wood in their bag. Mm -hmm. Really, all we're trying to do is we're trying to optimize their ball flight for the way that they deliver the golf club. We're going to see trends, generally, if someone's swinging a little bit slower versus someone else, that the center of gravity being a little bit lower and a little more like a fairy wood or, or hybrid is going to help their game to get the ball to get up in the air fly a little further and give you better stopping power. It's not always gonna be the case, but you're gonna see that most of the time. And we're also seeing here that the gains were definitely made as we transition from more moderate speed to a faster speed when we didn't maybe see as much separation. I mean, yeah, Thomas, that makes a lot of sense. You know, kind of what matters the most is that 
you're just properly gapped throughout um, your bag. I think a lot of players maybe play with, you know, some bigger gaps, in, especially when they get to those long clubs, four irons to driving irons to hybrids. And there's definitely room for improvement in their setup, right? Yeah, and it's where they're, they're making that transition from their longest iron in their bag, and they're trying to find that next club up. And when you're doing this, gap based on carry distance not total distance, because if I was based on, on total distance and I'll use my three iron at moderate speed, you know, it was still getting out there. It was just getting there a different way. It was a lot flatter. Well, we want to get the ball up in the air, because let's face it, the, the, the fairways aren't, or the greens aren't as soft as what we're seeing here on, on, on track, man, especially if it's rained. That's why it's important for you to get that optimal carry and total distance. So golfers, if you want to find your optimal carry and total distance with, with your game, Make sure you first subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we've got other great stuff like this coming your way in the future. Also, if you live in Minnesota, make sure you come in and get a club fitting with, with us. You can always book your club fitting at swinglabperformancegolf.com.